Welcome and thanks for tuning in. I'm Cameron Delano, Strategic Architect with F5, and this is the fourth installment of our series of videos that explore the various hybrid architectures that can be deployed using the F5 product portfolio. We'll be showing how to use the accompanying GitHub repo and CICD platform as stepping stones to deploying these solutions in your own environment. Here in part four, we'll be showcasing the F5 Distributed Cloud Web App and API Protection Services bot and DDoS detection and protection features as well as the Big IP Advanced Web Application Firewall. So what do I mean by a hybrid architecture? Well, these are deployments that utilize multiple F5 products in a complementary pattern to provide a layered defense in depth security strategy. In this example, we'll be deploying bot defense and DDoS detection and mitigation using F5's distributed cloud services at the edge and a traditional WAF closer to the app with Big IP Advanced WAF. Now, what does this give us? Well, all applications require protections for things like the app and API OWASP top 10, layer three and seven denial of service, malicious user detection, fraud and bot defense. We can provide that with the distributed cloud web app and API protection at the edge. Additionally, each app has specific requirements related to its use case, the infrastructure it's deployed on, and the language it's written in. We can provide this tailored protection closer to the application using the Big IP Advanced WAF. This deployment is part of our hybrid security architecture series. I highly encourage you to check it out. The intro article is linked in the video description, and it's a good jumping off point for the rest of the series. In each of the subsequent articles, we dive into the use case and include step-by-step -step instructions for deploying your own services using the code and CICD pipeline provided in the associated GitHub repo. Now we'll be deploying an edge WAF as well. But the focus of this deployment is the bot defense and DDoS detection and mitigation features provided by the Distributed Cloud Web App and API Protection Service. Bot defense is crucial in today's digital landscape as the number of automated bot attacks continues to rise. By implementing effective bot defense measures, businesses can safeguard their online assets and maintain a secure digital environment for their customers. Effective bot defense can also help prevent cybercrime and ensure the privacy and security of sensitive information. Equally as important is DDoS detection and mitigation. DDoS attacks can have severe consequences for businesses, including loss of revenue, reputational damage, and customer churn. DDoS detection and mitigation helps businesses maintain continuity by preventing these attacks from disrupting their operations. Now let's take a quick look at the prerequisites we need for the deployment. You're going to need a distributed cloud account and an API certificate an AWS account that's subscribed to the Big IP machine image in the AWS marketplace, as well as a Terraform cloud and a GitHub account. Now let's go ahead and get into our demo. To begin, we need to set up our environment. As I mentioned, we're using Terraform cloud. This is so that we can share state between our Terraform runs. So let's go ahead and begin there. I've pre-created most of our workspaces. We need one for each asset being deployed. We're missing the XE workspace, so I'll create that now. Here, we need to make sure that we choose CLI workflow since we'll be using GitHub runners to run our Terraform. Once we have it created, we need to go into the settings and ensure that we're sharing state with all the other workspaces. Now, we need to set up our variables. At the root of your organization, select Settings, then Variable Sets. As you can see, I've pre-created most of these as well. But we still need our API Certificate Environment variable. While this specific variable may not be sensitive, I'm going to still mark it as such out of habit and in an abundance of caution. Also note that I've shared the variable set with all the other workspaces in the organization. Now all these variables and values are provided both in the article series and in the GitHub readme. I've just pre-created things to save time. Now let's go ahead and get started on our GitHub configuration. We link to the repo in the article and also include instructions for what's required. The first thing we need to do is create a fork in the repo. I've already got one ready with some pre-created secrets to save time. We need to have a secret for each Terraform cloud workspace that we created. We're still missing our distributed cloud workspace, so I'll add that now. Now, just like with our Terraform cloud variable set, 
Everything needed to set this up is provided in the article series in GitHub README. Now that we've finished setting up our environment, we can go ahead and begin our deployment. To begin our deployment, the first thing we need to do is check out our deployment branch. This needs to be named deploy-xc-bigip. This can be changed in the GitHub Actions workflow config if required. Now that we're in our deploy branch, we need to copy over and set up our local TF vars. This needs to be done for infra, bigip, and xc. Now, in the infra TF vars, you'll add your deployment prefix and your resource owner. The deployment prefix will be used throughout all resources as a way to identify what's been created. You can also make any changes to what region and availability zones you want your assets in. Next, in the big IP TFRs, you can change the machine image if you require more features or greater throughput. And finally, in the XC TFRs, you will need to provide your XC tenant URL, the namespace for your deployment, the fully qualified domain name of your application, and any additional features we want to turn on. For our deployment, that'll be WAF and blocking mode, bot defense, and DDoS protection. Next, we need to comment out the tfvars section of our gitignore so the files will be pushed to GitHub when we deploy. Once all the changes have been made, we add and commit the changes and push our deploy branch to GitHub to kick off the build. Back in GitHub, we can see our deployment under Actions. Now we'll monitor our pipeline and see things being created and watch for errors. Some of these resources take quite a while to stand up, so I'm going to use some video magic and speed this up a bit for the sake of timing. We can see that we're now on our infrastructure. This is all of our AWS resources being created, such as our VPC and our subnets. Next, it moves on to Juice Shop. This is deploying our application server, our web app, our IAM roles, and any additional network resources needed for our application to run. Next is our big IP. This is going to deploy our instance, the IAM role, any additional network resources, as well as run declarative onboarding and AS3 from the automation tool chain to onboard our big IP and deploy our virtual servers, pools, and WAF policy. The outputs of this module will provide the information we need to connect to our big IP after it's deployed, our management IP address, and our auto-generated password. Last but not least, we move on to our distributed cloud resources. This is deploying our load balancer, pool, and WAF policy. And just like that, we're finished. We could head on back to the summary and view our completed workflow. Now let's look back at the big IP outputs and get the information we need to log into our instance. And once we log in, we can check and see what's been created. If we change into our tenant, in this case tenant1, we can see the virtual server that was created. Now, if we navigate to our security policies, we can see the WAF policy that was deployed. We can dig a bit deeper into this and view our policy under resources. Now let's check our pool. As you can see, here we have our Juice Shop app server as our pool member. Now let's head to the security tab and take another look at our WAF policy. Here we can see that we're in blocking mode for our virtual server. If we dig a bit deeper into our WAF policy, we can see that it was based on the rapid deployment policy. We can change this back in our advanced WAF AS3 config in the GitHub repo. Now let's head to our distributed cloud tenant and take a look at what we've built. Once we log in, we navigate to the web app and API protection tile. Here we can see our load balancer that was created and we can take a deeper look into our configuration by clicking the three dots and choosing Manage Configuration. First, let's look at our WAF policy. Here we can see our default WAF policy in blocking mode. 
Now let's look at our bot protection configuration. Here we can see bot defense is enabled, and if we navigate to our policy, we can see our JavaScript insertion config. Now if we check out our protected endpoints, we can see that we have it set to block. Next, we have our denial of service protection. We have it set to enabled with auto mitigation. And if we take a look at our mitigation rules, we can see that we're applying them based on country. Finally, let's look at our common security controls. Here we can see that we have malicious user detection enabled with our JavaScript and CAPTCHA challenges set to default. Now let's check our web app. And here we can see the juice shop ready and willing to take our order and leak our credentials. So let's go ahead and run a rudimentary credential stuffing attack on the login endpoint for our app. Here I have a simple script that loops through a curl. We'll go ahead and run it and see all of our attempts getting blocked. Now let's take a look at our security dashboards. Here you can see we have quite a bit of bot traffic. And we can drill down even deeper by selecting our load balancer. Here we can see our bot defense security events. 30 events all from the same source. We can even get more information on the security events tab. We can see the source, the HTTP method, the type of event, and what triggered the block. Now we can dig even deeper by selecting the bot defense tab. We identify humans, good bots, and malicious bots. We can get the source, ASN, and geolocation, as well as the top endpoints attacked. As you can see, we give you a wealth of information to allow you to make the best decisions about the health and security of your applications. I hope you've enjoyed this quick demo. F5 Distributed Cloud Bot Defense provides seamless integration for real-time safeguarding of your web applications and APIs against a diverse range of attacks. This feature enables enterprises to benefit from advanced bot defense and sophisticated security monitoring to eliminate malicious traffic targeting user accounts, content scraping, and ad fraud. Additionally, F5 Distributed Cloud Web App and API Protection safeguards applications from volumetric Layer 3 and 7 DDoS attacks at the network edge, allowing your apps to remain globally accessible while avoiding disruption to genuine customers. The service also furnishes insights into both past and ongoing attacks that have been mitigated, empowering proactive measures to thwart malicious individuals. Thanks for tuning in and have a nice day.